Chapter 4, a list. So far, we have been talking about the basic concepts of abstract data type, and we talked about arrays and structures and uh, stack and queues. Okay, now we will talk about lists. In this chapter, we will have a couple of different topics. First, we will uh, talk about what a linked list is. Okay, so the definition and some implementation. And then we will implement the stacks and queues based on the linked list. Okay, since we defined a stacks and queues in an abstract data type, okay, then we can change our implementations while keeping the specifications. As long as our implementation meets the specifications, that's okay. So we will use linked list to implement stacks and queues. And then we will talk about circularly uh, linked list and we will apply this linked list to a matrices especially when the matrices uh, matrices are sparse which means when we have lots of zeros in the matrix and we have a few non-zero elements then instead of allocating memory space for the matrices we just use a linked list to represent a matrix okay so we'll talk about that and then uh, finally, we will uh, briefly mention about the doubly linked list. And first of all, what is a list? Okay, so a list is a varying length linear collection of homogeneous elements. So array is a good example of a list. Okay, so we talked about the difference between the arrays and the structures. One array includes lots of elements, and these elements are supposed to be homogeneous. But in the structure, the elements can be heterogeneous, some different data types, right? So array is a good example of a list. And in this definition, uh, the linear means each list element has a unique predecessor, except the first. For example, uh, in this example, we have array. The, the name of array is array. And array 4 has a unique predecessor, which is array 3. And array 5 has a predecessor, which is array 4. Okay, array 3 has array 2. Array 2 has array 1, and array 1 has array 0. But array 0 is the first one, so we don't have a predecessor for array 0. Okay. Okay, then the next one. Each element has a unique successor. So it means when we have an array element, then we know which one is the next one. So for example, if we have array 3, Okay, if this one is our element, the current element, then the next one, the successor is array 4. That is unique. There is only one successor. There is only one next element. Okay, so when we have array 4, the next one is array 5. Okay, if we have array 5, then we have array 6. So that is a linear. We can put all the elements on a line based on this index, if it is an array. Okay, linear means we can put all the elements on a line. Okay, so in the previous slide, I used an array as an example of a list, but there is there are a couple of problems with this array. Okay, first problem is that it has a fixed size. So if we uh, have a static uh, array variable, then the, the size is fixed at a compiled time. And if we have a dynamic allocated array, then we can change the size in the runtime, but we have to fix the size at the runtime. Okay, so we can choose the size, but once we declare, once we allocate memory space, then the array size is fixed. Don't get confused. So even when uh, array is allocated dynamically, but still, once we allocate memory space, then the memory space, the size of the memory space is fixed. Okay, that's the first problem. And the second problem is that it is inefficient with some operations like insertion and deletions. Think about this one. We have like uh, uh, 100 elements in this array. But sometimes we want to insert a new element in the middle of these 100 elements. When we insert, we want to insert a new element at index 50. Then what should we do? Then we have to shift all the right elements from 50 to 99. We have to shift. And then we can have one uh, empty cell at 50 then we can add we can add new element there okay so uh, when we delete one element same thing 
kind of thing happens here. So let's say we delete the tenth element. Then we will delete a nine. Okay. Then we have to shift the other elements on the right side. We have to shift all of them, right? So when we delete one element, it has a garbage there. Okay. Then we have to shift. Otherwise, we have to keep another array to indicate which one is a garbage and which one is a real value. So instead of having an, another extra array, then we will keep one integer variable n, okay? So that uh, with one uh, integer variable, uh, we know how many elements we have in this array. So to keep one integer variable, then we have to shift all the elements whenever we insert or delete, right? So if we have to shift all the elements whenever we add or delete, it is really inefficient. It means you know, basically we have to we have to update lots of memory spaces. If it is an integer array, then if we have to shift like 10 elements, then we have to update 40 bytes. Right? So if we have to update 40 bytes, then it means a lot. You know, compared to other operations like plus, minus, or something. If we have to have any access to the memory space, it is really expensive. It takes a lot of time. To you, you cannot feel any difference, right? So because your homework is really simple and when we shift like 100 elements in the array, then it can finish really quickly. So you cannot see any time delay there. But basically, it takes a lot of time. So if, if the program is really uh, heavy and you, you should handle lots of data, like millions and millions of elements, then it takes a lot of time. So that's the problem with this array, okay? So as an alternative options, we have a linked representation. So do you remember the self-referential pointers? Actually, we talked about this one in the chapter two, okay? So we have one structure here, and in this structure, we have a data element and we have pointer element, okay? So the link, it will point the next element, Okay, so basically instead of having this array, we, we will have a linked list, as you can see on the bottom of this slide. So the bat is the first element, and uh, this one is a structure. In this structure, we have a bat and a pointer. Okay, and then data is bat, and the link will point another structure. Okay, and then second structure is a cat. And the data of the second uh, structure is cat, and it has also link, and it will point another structure. And then set is uh, data for the third structure, and the pointer of this structure is null, so that we know set is the last element of this linked list, because the pointer is null. Okay, so these pointers are link. Okay and it is actually a logical. And whenever we add new element, okay, then the, we will allocate the memory space from the heap, and we don't know where it is. But as long as we have an address, then we can point to that memory space, okay? Then with that pointer, then we can get there, and then from that pointer, from that space, then we can update that structure's pointer to point to another structure. So, Whenever we insert, then we need to allocate the memory space for this structure, then we have to change the links. And when we delete, then we have to change, we, we have to deallocate that memory space, and then we will change the pointers. So instead of uh, having this simple array, we will keep this list with the pointers. So we need a few more operations to manage this linked list, but we can use our memory space really efficiently and uh, this linked list is really flexible. Okay, so in the previous slide, we understand why we use a linked list instead of an array, right? So now let's talk about the detail of a linked list. First, we'll talk about singly linked list. Okay, if we understand the singly linked list, then the doubly linked list is quite a simple, straightforward extension of singly linked list. So as you can see in this slide, at the bottom of this slide, we have a figure. And the, this linked list is based on the connection of the nodes. And one node is 
one structure basically. So in this graph, we have a bad structure and cat and sad and fat, and these are nodes, okay? And then these nodes are connected by a pointer. So basically, the node is an element of a linked list. If you use an array to compare this linked list to, to an array, this node is actually one element of an array. Okay. So in the linked list node, we have two parts. First one is a data part, and second one is a pointer to the next node. And basically, we you know the nodes don't need to resize in the physically sequential locations. Now, this is not an array. If it is an array, then when we allocate memory space statically or dynamically, all the elements should be should be located in the in the memory space physically in a sequential way. So they are adjacent to each other. So array one is right next to array zero and right before array two in the physical memory space. But when we have a linked list, it doesn't have to be like that. So we have lots of nodes somewhere. And as long as the pointers are pointing that node correctly, then we can make one like a curve going through all the nodes. And the link will do that. Okay, so let's look at this structure. Type def struct t underbar list underbar node. Okay, and then first part is the data part. So in this example, we have a string. If you want, you can have a character array. Okay, or it could be a structure. Think about a person structure. So person structure can have a name and the date of birth and email and phone number or some other elements in there in there. And that structure can be a data part here. Okay? So instead of just a string, we can have a other data type. Okay? Other structure data type too. And then the second part is a simple uh, pointer. So since uh, this link, the, the red colored link, is supposed to be pointing the next element, and the next element is the structure of t list node. So uh, it should be a pointer of a struct t underbar list underbar node. Okay. And then this structure is defined as a list underbar node. So uh, after defining, then the list node star head, if we declare one point variable head, then head is a pointer which can point any any structure, any node. Again, let's take a look at this structure one more time. In this structure, we have a data part. So in this example, we have simply we have just one string, but it could be a structure. And then second part is a pointer. So you know, uh, if we define this structure as a list and by node, then we can use a list and by node pointer. But while we are in the middle of defining this structure, we don't have list on the bar node yet. So list on the bar node is equivalent to a struct t on the bar list on the bar node. Okay, so instead of using list on the bar node, which is not defined yet, we use a struct t list node pointer to declare one pointer. Okay, so basically list on the bar node pointer head is, is declaring one a pointer head and the struct t underbar list underbar node pointer link is declaring one pointer link. Okay, basically there are kind of same kind of pointers, but link is a member of this list underbar node structure. Now let's implement that uh, linked list. Okay, so first of all we have a structure as we have seen in the previous slide. We have a list underbar node. In this structure, we have a simple uh, data field as a string data type. Okay, and then we have a pointer a link. Okay, that is our node. Okay, this is one node. Okay, and then to handle this uh, linked list, we will declare, we will define a class, D list. Okay, D is for a dynamic. Okay, and then in the class, we have a private member, a list on the node pointer hat. Okay, so this class has just one pointer. Okay, and then as a public member functions, we have a constructor and destructor, and uh, we can have a delete list, okay, to deallocate all the memory spaces. Basically, you know, whenever we add a new node, then we have to allocate new memory space for that node, and then we have to link to that node, okay? And then 
When we are done with this linked list, then we have to deallocate all the memory spaces following this linked list. So deallocating is not that simple. Okay, if we allocate the memory space dynamically for an array, then the delete or free is enough because you know the, all the memory spaces are allocated and the, all the elements are adjacent to each other. So we have some we have the location and we have the size information. So delete can delete all of them at the same time. But the linked list is different. We have the, all the nodes separately and we don't know which one is where. Okay. So we have to follow this linked list and we have to deallocate. So delete list is not as simple. We have to implement this function. Okay. And then this class needs a retrieve function. So do we have this data in the linked list or which one is the second element in the linked list? Okay. So we have two different types of retrieve functions. Retrieve with the data or retrieve with index. And when we talk about the list, if you are confused, then think about an array. So array is it's not the linked list, but array is a simple version of list, but it's not efficient. But still, if you get confused with the linked list, then compare this one to an array. So, so then you can understand what these two retrieve functions do. And then next one is insert. So sometimes we want to uh, insert a new element, new node in the middle of this linked list. Okay. That is the beauty of this linked list. And the next one is the delete. Sometimes we want to delete one node. And then we don't have to shift. We just deallocate that node and then we have to change the pointers, a few pointers. That's it. So these two functions will show you why we use the linked list. And then sometimes we want invert, like reverse, if we want. Okay, then we might want a print functions and sometimes we need to check if it is empty okay so probably you have to implement all these functions 